Welcome LA Progressive friends, family, readers. Dick and I are delighted once again to sit down and talk to Bill Blum. Bill is a former judge and um, just an all around knowledgeable person who for the past uh, couple of months, we've been interviewing him and he's really been giving us an ongoing lesson and what's been happening in the courts. And uh, today is is no different than any, any of the other times. Today, we're gonna be talking about Trump and the New York trial. Uh, he has allowed us to publish this piece called Will Trump Go Down in New York in the LA Progressive? Bill Blum, talk to us, teach us some more stuff. Well, it's always great to be with you and happy Friday. So um, the people, well, the state of New York versus Donald Trump is underway. A jury of 12 has been um, seated with six alternates. So the case is, is underway. Jeopardy has attached. And um, opening statements probably from are, are going to occur on Monday. And for the first time in U.S. history, a sitting or former president is going to be on trial on felony charges, criminal charges. So this is an historic occasion. And um, it's even been punctuated today by some conspiracy theorist who uh, set himself on fire outside the courthouse, allegedly unrelated to these charges, but to protest what he believes is world domination by a conspiracy of um, billionaires lurking, lurking behind the scenes. Um, well, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll find out more about this um, in the coming days. But um, for the rest of us, the most important thing is that this case is going to go forward. There was a time when um, people on the left thought that Donald Trump would never face criminal accountability for anything that he's done or is alleged to have done. And those um, concerns have now been uh, set aside. He is facing accountability. Whether he's found not guilty or guilty or there's a hung jury, he is subject to trial just like every other person in the United States who uh, is um, accused of criminal wrongdoing. So this is quite, a, quite a, a, an amazing uh, turn of events. The crime that he's um, alleged to have committed, which is falsification of business records, just so people understand, if that's charged by itself in New York, it's only a misdemeanor. What elevates the crime to a felony is if the falsification of business records is done for the purpose of committing or concealing another crime. And in this case, the DA has alleged, the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, Manhattan district attorney, is alleging that the other crime involved violations of the federal election code, New York state election law, and New York tax law. And of course, as people know, this is what's called the hush money case, and it involves a payout to um, Stephanie Clifford, a.k.a. Stormy Daniels, a um, porn star, uh, regarding a tryst that she uh, supposedly had with Trump in 2006, the payouts in 2016 as he's running for president. It's in the amount of $130,000. And it's laundered to her and paid to her then attorney and then to her to keep her mouth shut about the uh, sexual encounter that they had, because that encounter came right after the Access Hollywood tapes were released during the 2016 campaign. And the allegation is that Trump was very concerned that if he had another bad story on top of that story, it could tank his um, prospects for winning. So that's the story behind that. And then the payment is disguised in Trump's business records as attorney's fees, when in fact, according to the DA, this was a disguised kind of campaign contribution. What makes that an illegal campaign contribution is that Michael Cohen would be limited by the amount that anybody can give to a candidate under the Federal Election Campaign Act uh, which was then $2,700, and he's sending her $130,000. But it gets even more complicated than that, because in order for Cohen to be enticed to go along with this scheme, and Cohen, you know, cooks it up with Trump and with David Pecker from the National Enquirer, 
the Trump people had to pay Cohen not only uh, the $130,000 back, but additional money to compensate him for the increased income tax that he would be uh, having to pay since he had to report that $130,000 as his income. It had to be accounted for some way. So th the payments to Cohen actually totaled about $420,000, according to the filing. So there's tax complications here as well. The target crime, election interference, doesn't have to be completed. And in order to satisfy the statute in New York that elevates falsification of business records to a class E felony, uh, a conviction so, so, on. So, Bill, yeah, so I, I must say that I, I am one of those progressives that never thought. Uh, I mean, Trump has escaped one thing after another right from the first time when he when he stepped off that bus and made those objectionable statements that would have ended anybody else's political campaign and the, the, the impeachment inquiry and the Miller report. And he just escapes and escapes and escapes. And so I am thrilled that we got this far. We On a Friday, we have a jury. We will see if we have a jury on, on Monday. I, I guess that, you know, personally, what I would like for, for, for Trump to do is be off the front pages. I don't care where he goes, but just he goes someplace. But the thing that I, I, I think that's going to have the real effect, other than the actual trial, is is how boorish and ugly Trump looks in his behavior when he's called into account. One of the things that happened today, uh, there was a break in the in the proceedings during the the hearing, and Trump started to stand up, and and the judge said, "We're not done here. Sit down." which they say utterly infuriated Trump. He's not used to that. And, and when he left, he was, he was steaming. And I, I think that will have some effect on those people, that, however they are in the middle, that aren't convinced that they shouldn't vote for him. Well, I think it's going to have some impact politically. But um, I like to separate the, the law from the politics. To me, this seems like a pretty solid case. The affair with Stormy Daniels is going to be established. Uh, the common scheme, this catch and kill scheme, where the Inquirer and Cohen helped Trump catch stories that would be embarrassing and then kill them so that they weren't published. So we're going to hear about his affair with Karen McDougal, the former Playboy model, to come in as a uh, common scheme type evidence. And what's going to be hard for the prosecution is to show Trump's intent was to commit an election type crime rather than to keep this from his wife. But of course you can have a dual purpose and the this, the the charge would be made any made if that dual purpose is served. So you could have an election component and keep it from the wife component. As far as the politics go, if there's a conviction, now, if, if, if there isn't a conviction, it could have just, just the opposite effect. That Trump could get a boost. He could brag that they tried to bring me down, they failed, and look at how strong I am and how tough I am. But um, I do think, and I agree with you, it will have an impact because Trump is being made to look small, and whiny and weak. And that's exactly the opposite of the image that he has so carefully cultivated with his supporters. So um, I think that from both aspects, this is a good solid case. And I liken it to the Al Capone situation where they never could get him for the murders, but they got him for income tax evasion. Right, right, right. So here we are, yeah. business yeah. records falsification. And wouldn't you agree that the timing, that, you know, so he had this uh, tryst with Stormy Daniels in 2006 or so, but didn't yeah. pay her off until 2016, which was, you know, as he prepared to run for the presidency. So even if he claims that the reason that this was done was to keep it hidden from his wife, why did he wait 10 years to do the payoff? And 
Well, she Stormy didn't come forward to uh, say, uh, I'm going to publish this story until he was running for president and got the Republican nomination. So that's why it, it's delayed. It's He's not being punished for having an illicit affair or potentially punished. He's being potentially punished for falsifying his business records for the purpose of committing another crime. And uh, we talked about the other three crimes that are in the picture here. So it wait, he waited and um, until she uh, threatened him with uh, going public. And who knows how many other women there are out there who might have done the same thing. Karen McDougal wanted to do something similar, probably not in order to embarrass Trump, but to embellish her own um, credentials because she was looking for some um, more publicity for herself. She, she's, uh, you know, she's a high profile type person to begin with. And I don't think she's got the same um, hard feelings towards Donald as uh, Stormy Daniels does. But who knows, after, the, after this trial, the enmity will be um, you know, mutual, I'm sure. Yeah, well, with Karen McDougal, I mean, she actually had an affair that lasted months. That's right. So a long the, affair. I don't know if there was any love involved, but there was some certain a certain amount of consistency. According yeah, I think that she says she loved him. According to Stormy Daniels, her affair lasted momentarily with Trump. Right. She said it was a very short uh, relationship. <laughs> relationship. That's right. Very short indeed. <laughs> and... Uh, all those details are probably going to come out um, in court, be reported on, unless Trump's lawyers, with his consent um, and the and the prosecution's consent, stipulate to the underlying facts. You know, I would expect that something like that might be coming down the pike too, in order to keep um, some of the more colorful uh, aspects of the testimony uh, under wraps, so to speak. Uh, you can get a stipulation to the to the facts. We're going to see. A, we're going to have some surprises. I, I think in this case. Yep, I can only imagine. Well, Bill, I think uh, this brings us to the conclusion of another interesting conversation, and I'm looking forward to many more. Um, we'll see what happens on Monday. I'm sure that. Yeah, we'll see what happens next week when Trump's immunity case is argued before the Supreme Court. Oh my uh, gosh! Exactly. <laughs> That's well, another I, one. He certainly provides us with a lot of content. Yeah. He really does. <laughs> He makes journalism great again. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bill, thank you for joining us. And um, thank you. We'll see Always you a next. pleasure. All right. Yeah, good talking All to right. you. Thank so you. So long.